This video has some suggestions on which pitches you can throw when, how to throw them off of another pitch. But basically you want to make sure that you're not falling into the hitter's you know, expectations, being ready to mix it up. And if you make a mistake with a pitch, are you going to get hurt? Or is it going to be fooling the batter even if it goes right down the middle? Hey guys, hope you're all doing well today. I wanted to talk a little bit about cushioning your mistakes as a pitcher. The thought for doing this video kind of originated from people throwing a lot of curveballs, movement, uh, breaking balls, instead of throwing fastballs this year. Obviously the fastball is a little bit easier to hit with the reduced pitch speeds, although they fixed it a little bit. I don't know how much of a difference it's made, but a lot of people are just throwing breaking ball after breaking ball after breaking ball. And it's kind of made me think about what's the purpose of the fastball in this case, or how we can use it effectively, and how to mix it up without just being, you know, throwing junk the whole time. Obviously, if you want someone to stop throwing breaking balls, you have to take some pitches, get some good counts, and then make them throw the fastball, like on 2-0 counts and things like that. If you want to get a fastball, you have to work the count. There are a few people that will just keep throwing the fastball, but for the most part, when people are just throwing breaking balls, in order to make them throw a fastball, you have to make them throw some breaking balls off the plate first. So that's on you if they keep throwing you breaking balls and you're not able to hit them, you gotta take some pitches. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about from the pitcher side, how you can avoid making big mistakes while you're pitching. And the breaking balls are a big part of this. So when you're throwing a fastball over and over, obviously people can sit on it. It's the easiest pitch to hit, especially in this game. When you're throwing a breaking ball, you're changing the eye level. I feel like the game engine makes it harder to hit on purpose. Uh, even if you square it up, it feels like you're not actually hitting the ball hard sometimes. So obviously the breaking ball is a much more effective pitch, especially the curveball. I feel like sliders are a little bit easier to hit, but curveballs have been hard to square up even when you do actually put the PCI right on it. And this also kind of goes back to the video about um, throwing the sinker and then throwing a fastball right afterwards. If you noticed in that video, some of those fastballs kind of ended up over the middle of the plate, not inside as much as I wanted them to be. But the fact that I threw the sinker and established the sinker before that, they thought the ball was going to dip, right? So even though I made a mistake, because I had already established a pitch that they were looking for, the mistake was cushioned by the fact that the ball didn't do what they thought it was going to do. So it was, it was already in their head and it messed them up even though I made the mistake. So that's kind of what I'm getting at. If you set up the hitter to think a certain way and then you make a mistake, sometimes they're going to miss it. And this happens obviously a lot with that sinker. It's happened to me like probably 20 times at least yesterday where I was throwing the sinker, established it, especially with Don Sutton. I established that sinker and then threw that fastball pretty much over the middle, a little bit low, but uh, over the center of the plate. And people were just missing it. They were fouling it off every single time. The same goes for uh, if you're not working on a breaking ball, but maybe a changeup. If you throw a changeup over the plate after throwing a lot of fastballs, then sometimes they're just gonna miss it because they're gonna be way ahead of it. You know, the, the speed fools them rather than the location. That happens all the time in MLB as well, in real life, where you throw a changeup down the middle, but they were looking dead set on the fastball and they just miss it. That's uh, that's why changeups are good on like 2-0, 3-1 counts and things like that. People will throw that sometimes. Um, I throw some sliders on 3-1 counts. If it looks like it's going down the middle, they're like, all right, fastball's coming. But um, even if a slider kind of drops right over the plate, it was my mistake, but I cushioned the mistake by throwing a pitch that they weren't expecting at that time. So a lot of it is just kind of making sure that you're aware of the situation and aware of what the hitter's been trying to do. If they've been you know, on the fastball all game, then when you are in a fastball count, 2-0, 3-1, 3-0 uh, even sometimes, then trying to not throw a fastball is going to be pretty effective. I mean, anyone who's like 500, you know, winning percentage or higher has probably figured this out already. And it's one of the more simple parts of the game, but it's uh, it's much more effective than people get give it credit for. And it's really on the hitter. If you're if you're playing a World Series player, chances are they're going to be they're going to be ready for something else uh, in a fastball count. But if you see that, like let's say. You get into a couple 2-0 counts and you've thrown change up a couple times. Now they know, let's say if it's a really good player, they know that probably you're going to throw a change up, not a fastball again. So that's when you have to change it up again. You have to go back and re readjust. So you've already adjusted going to the change up instead of the fastball. Now you have to adjust again 
and see, okay, if I make a mistake on this pitch, will I be okay? And at the higher levels, you're going to give up home runs on pitches that you shouldn't have thrown. And I, I do this a lot where I give up a home run where I realized as I was throwing the pitch that this is going to be a bad pitch no matter what. Even if I locate it where I wanted to, it's probably going to go. And just knowing where the hot spots are for for the game, the high and away fastball is going to be hit for a home run every time. So don't even bother with that one. Low and in fastballs can be turned on if they're looking for it. So you can kind of use that to your advantage if you're throwing a change up low and in. Uh, people will turn on it, but then they'll swing and miss or pull it way foul. And then throwing the ball low in the zone is going to be good as well. If you're throwing a straight fastball at the bottom of the zone, you know, if you miss, it might go over the middle of the plate and that's where you get hurt. But if you're throwing a low changeup, then maybe if they're looking for a fastball, they're just going to get on top of that changeup. So it's kind of, you know, some of it is basic pitching, but it's also... Uh, just kind of looking a little deeper into what the hitter is thinking and you know some pitchers are really good at hitting their spots and they don't worry too much about making mistakes if they accidentally miss their location then they're okay with it because they've been hitting their spots the rest of the game but for people that you know feel like you know maybe you don't hit your spots as well as you'd like to then it's really about being cerebral and knowing when to throw certain pitches uh, against what the, the hitter has been doing for the whole game try to establish something, work off of that. If you have Dodd Sutton, that's a really gu a good guy to work on this with. He has a lot of movement and control, but he's got five different good pitches that you can throw, and he's good to mess around with if, you're, if you want to try to do this online, where you establish a sinker, throw some fastballs, and then you can work your screwball off of the, the knuckle curve, things like that. Um, and you'll notice that when you throw with Don Sutton, even though he throws an 89 on the fastball, it's very hard for him to get squared up because you've just got five pitches that are moving all over the place. And when you do make a mistake, even throwing it down the middle, it's still hard for them to square it up and hit bombs. So if you've been struggling to pitch this year, this is some stuff that I want you to keep in mind pretty much at all times. Before you throw every pitch, think, if I make a mistake with this pitch, is it going to be dangerous? So if you're pitching effectively, this can work throughout the game. You know, you can make mistakes all game, but if you're considering what the hitter is looking for and throwing something else, establishing one thing and then throwing something else, that's going to be really, really effective for you when you do end up making mistakes as all pitchers do. You can fool them by movement, you can fool them by timing and speed, and even if you make a mistake, you'll still be okay. So hopefully this video helps you guys out. Um, if you have any other suggestions or any questions, let me know, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe. If you want to see something new or have a specific part of the game you want help with, be sure to leave a comment and we'll all try to help out. Peace.